I, I, think, I think this progress is inevitable. Whether it'll happen tomorrow or the day after tomorrow, mm. it'll happen. Whether it'll be with our generation or the generation after us. Is this a law? Is this Osmar's law that we've got here? <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> I, I think the wisest thing to do indeed is to teach these machines about ethics and they will be more ethical than mm. we are today ourselves. Uh, the interesting thing about ethics is that um, what I believe is right and wrong, somebody else in another country with another education, mm -hmm. another kind of culture may not see as right or wrong. I mean, it's, it's not correct. necessarily the same. Yeah. Even in our own society, with time, ethics change. So, not a very long time ago, uh, it was okay to kill somebody in a duel. If they throw the glove at you and there's a duel, it's okay, it was mm -hmm. legitimate. It's not acceptable today. Um, so we don't know what ethics will be tomorrow, what is right and what is wrong for tomorrow. So it's a very interesting but difficult question to answer. So in that context, when, when ethics may change as well, and we mm -hmm. don't know what ethics will be tomorrow, how can we decide about uh, what we should do for tomorrow based on our vision of today? I don't think that ethics is rooted in um, cons uh, what I would call time-bound con concepts. I, I think that ethics is an entirely different kind of, of awareness, of sensitivity, maybe even of rational thought. It is an entirely different kind of thinking. And um, I think I think it's probably almost unique, or at least it has a large part of being unique to humans. There may be animals that have similar kinds of awarenesses. Um, and, and we do see some behavior among animals that seems to, be, seems to have a kind of ethical awareness built into it. I mean, um, um, I mean, I'm searching in my head right now for an example of this, but what keeps coming up is the, the image of, of elephants returning to the funeral site of the old um, head of the, uh, of what do they call an elephant group? Pride or whatever. Anyway, whatever a group of elephants is, and I, and I can't help but think that this kind of sensitivity to the death of an individual within among the elephants has some kind of echo in human behavior too so I, I'm, I don't want to limit this perception entirely to humans and I'm not a, opposed to the notion that we could build ethical sensitivity into it what you put your finger on for me is a real problem and that is how you um, give a robot sufficient mental, med, um, uh, mental tools, right, to handle the, nu uh, the nuances that we build into our ethical reasoning. And so this, I think, is the real problem. I, I, I just don't think that there's a problem in, in um, what we would call rational decision making within a machine. I think what the real problem is, is evaluation and ethical norms of that evaluation. But, but even though we humans today have those tools, we still differ on many things. Yes. Take the, take the yes, sure. death penalty, for example. Yeah. Uh, we don't have the death penalty here. In the States they have it, in other countries they have it. But the way also uh, uh, of uh, killing is different. They behead people yeah. in Saudi Arabia, they inject a, a chemical in the States, they hang somebody else in somewhere else, they have the guillotine yeah. in France, they used to anyways. So, and, 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 uh, so beheading would be uh, uh, bad for us. We don't see, even if, suppose we are in the States, we accept um, death penalty, we would see that as something unethical to, uh, uh, 
well, to be had somebody with all the pain that we can imagine and all that stuff. For currently, today, in the, in the states, in the, some of the states where death penalty is, is still uh, done, we're trying to think about limiting the pain and all that stuff to make it acceptable. So if we provide, so despite the fact we have all these tools, we, we interpret things differently. So machines, when we give them these tools, will they also interpret uh, the right and wrong in different ways, or will they be cookie cutters? We don't expect them to be cookie cutters. Uh, they will be different. So well, well, yeah, that's a good point, Oswald. The, the argument that you get uh, on many of these, from many of these people is that, you know, if we can have them evaluate data and come out with an answer, that they, they could be programmed to evaluate whether or not you know, you're going to kill your daughter or not. You know, um, in other words, you, the issue is not just a matter of, of uh, building a machine that can make evaluations. It's also uh, weighing the potential outcomes and, and what I have called the moral thinking that goes into it. I, I think building into a machine, not the specifics of the case, you know, not whether or not we're going to hang this guy or give him a shot. It, that's not the kind of thing that I, I'm concerned about. It is whether or not this machine will be able to distinguish right from wrong. I.e., is, is it acceptable that the machine kill me after I've created it? So the, 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 uh, I had a, this discussion uh, not a long time ago with other colleagues about ethics and, and teaching ethics to machines and one was joking saying well why don't we create a new religion and make sure that all the machines are devout uh, followers of this religion and the religion says that all humans are gods and the machines have to follow those gods mm -hmm. and if they don't obey there are consequences would that make more sense than just trying to teach them ethics because then we, we guarantee they will not harm us, and we will always be superior. Well, I, uh, from my perspective, the issue of religion is somewhat different than moral reasoning, right? Yep. Um, I think religion brings another dimension into the issue. And, um, and, and I, wouldn't, I wouldn't want us to program a machine so that it would be pious when we're pious and not pious when we're not pious. I, I mean, I, I just, um, I, I find that completely opposite to what I understand people when they're religious, what they want to do. So in effect then, I think what I'm trying to argue for is that if we're going to have a machine that can evaluate, it should have a, an evaluation mechanism that would allow it to evaluate right and wrong, and whether or not any, any given um, action on its part would, uh, would be judged as right or wrong. And if you cannot give a machine that kind of evaluation and nuance, then, then it can't be turned loose in a human society. That's, that's my point. So I don't have any problem in using uh, robots, you know, to do surgery. I think that that's just an extension of our capability of, of uh, control. But a machine that is that looks like you and walks like you and talks like you and then destroys everything in this room is not my idea of of what we should create. So. Um, perhaps that's old school, I don't know, but that's, uh, I think that's uh, my line in the sand. But there's one aspect of ethics that we didn't talk about, uh, which, which has to do with choice. So yes. you mentioned, for example, the, the scalpel, and you mm -hmm. said, well, there are people on this, on this planet that haven't seen or don't even know what the scalpel is, so there's mm -hmm. an imbalance. Yeah. Um, but some people may not want to know about the scalpel. So the same thing can happen with technology. Yes. They don't want to deal with robots. Mm -hmm. And that's a choice. And they have the right to do so. And, and, and 
that can become a dilemma in all the day. The, the other issue that is interesting is uh, also related to ethics is whether the machine in all the day belongs to some human, somebody, yes. or it's an entity that is independent yes, and responsible. Right. Mm -hmm. And in that case, the laws apply, apply to it mm -hmm. the same way or different laws apply to it. Do we just press a button, reset, or put it in prison, or whatever? I mean, mm -hmm. how does it apply? How, how do these laws apply, or should we consider them a different class of citizens? Or uh, These are interesting questions. Anyways. Yes, they are great them. questions, actually. And um, uh, uh, from my perspective, uh, very interesting ones, because um, up to now, we have been comfortable in accepting um, that scientists will uh, always do the right thing. Uh, that we will not have Einstein's blowing up the whole world. We, you know, we, we really believe in the moral efficacy of, of scientific reasoning. Um, one of the things that concerns me is the fact that that doesn't seem to apply in the area of uh, robotic development. In other words, um, the issue of developing a robot that is beyond the bounds of what, of what we would call scientific control is now within reach. And, and I think that poses major problems. And I don't have enough confidence in scientific uh, ethical thinking to believe that they are always going to control that. Moreover, I think it's quite possible, as you yourself point out, we could have companies and other kinds of people who make these machines just for their own uh, purposes. Um, so in effect then, I think there's all kinds of red flags going up. And I don't think we have the ground rules laid down for how this is going to work out. But what I do say is this, that when we make these kinds of machines, the only way that we will be able to relate to them is through a moral and, and ethical environment. We cannot, we cannot make them to uh, operate in an environment with which we cannot con uh, control or with which we cannot relate. So if they are going to operate in our world, they will have to have sensitivity to human dimensions. That's uh, my take on it, yeah. One of the fascinating things that happened when I went to the Singularity University reunion this year, uh, just a few weeks ago now, is that they decided that they should be the first educational entity to have an AI uh, chair of one of their tracks that, I mean, they, they teach multiple tracks mm -hmm. and they thought that uh, they need to be able to claim, at least in 2013, that the chair of one of those uh, edu educational tracks is an uh, AI. What that would mean exactly, they didn't uh, <laughs> Define. They they just want to be able to say it. Then I then I was noticing that there's a Japanese a humanoid robot that they're talking about the end point of that robot. How will you know when they've been successful? It should be able to enter a Japanese uh, university, take courses with other human students, take exams, and you know graduate from whatever course it's in. Mm -hmm. And if it can do that, if it can be successful like that over a four year period, then they will have really succeeded in what they're setting out to do. So when you think about how provisional your talk is, how much it's based on things that might or might not happen, mm -hmm. It seems like it's it, it's it's not based on something that might not happen. The, the the likelihood of these things happening because people are pushing for them so much is very high. Then when you go back to Bill Joy and the idea of relinquishment, mm -hmm. all of you in this room think of whether you would like to be the person responsible for this idea of relinquishment, 
Let's take things that society could do, society advances, and say, no, we're not going to do that. Let's stop right here. It's not a very popular stance, I think. It's not a thing most people would want to do. Mm -hmm. And the possibility of yours being successful is almost zero. Mm -hmm. Because there'll be a Captain Nemo on an isolated island somewhere who'll do the thing anyway, even if you stop technology in its tracks in the US and Canada and Europe in some areas, somebody will do it somewhere on the planet. So I think although uh, relinquishment is, is an interesting idea, it, it's fascinating that you can't name anybody famous who said, okay, I'm going to be the person responsible for relinquishment <laughs> of this particular area. That person, mm. that identification does not exist. And if any of you sitting in this room think, <laughs> you're probably thinking, yeah, I don't want to do that either. It's not for me. So it's probably not going to happen. It's simply not going to happen, right? Well, I have one comment about that and then we have to go. And yeah. that is, if we can make a robot to be a chair, I was the chair for most of my career around here. If we can make a robot do what I had to go through, yeah. then let's bloody well make it. Okay? <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> okay.